Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. Welcome back to the channel today. Glad to see you today in QuickBooks Point of Sale. I'm going to quickly run through how you can mass update numerous inventory items. And so this would be where you don't want to go into the item list and edit every single item and click on a field and update it. You want to do it on a mass level for numerous groups of items or large quantities of items. <clears throat> and so I've done uh, videos similar to this before, but today we are just going to kind of do a more generic one. Uh, whatever field it is you're trying to massively update, I kind of run into this a lot with customers. They're like, oh my gosh, I have to go through a thousand items and change something about the item. But you don't. You can do it on a mass level. We'll get into that right now. First, I'm going to have you click on the link down in the description below to get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group. Uh, strong group. Over a thousand members in there. Hopefully, we'll reach 2,000 sometime. Who knows? Uh, click on that link. Get over there. You can ask questions, get answers, request videos, talk to other people who are using QuickBooks Point of Sale it's a great place to be. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe right now so all the new QuickBooks point of sale videos come at you all the time. All right, so you're gonna need Excel or Office installed on your computer in order to do this because we're gonna be using Excel. Instead of going to the item list and updating everything, we're just gonna go to Utilities and go to Export. And really what we're doing here is I'm gonna tell you the correct method to export just the information that you want to change and then re-import and update your items on just the information you want to change. So I, I went there on the file menu to utilities and export. I'm going to inventory items next. Uh, you are going to create whatever name for the export file. So I'm just gonna call this mass export you can call it whatever you want so that you remember it you're gonna tell it that you're gonna do this on sheet one roll one that's totally fine and when you do this you're gonna create a new mapping so on this drop down here you're gonna say add new you're gonna add a new mapping up here you're gonna name the mapping let's say maybe I well first I'm gonna unselect all I haven't really thought about what I want to update here one thing you always want though no matter what you are updating is you want item number and item name and that's so that we can have point of sale recognize the items and update them uh, we'll show you what that means in a little bit here but let's say I am going to mass update uh, some look I want to do size and then I want to maybe mess with some order costs maybe there's a bunch of uh, products where I want to update the order cost. Uh, what else? Uh, you would do this, you can do this to mess with the accounts. I, I'm not going to recommend this if, if you're not like really into the accounting or know what you're doing in your accounting program, but you could use this to mass update your cost of goods account, your asset account, your income account, if you really know what you're doing. Some people like to do that. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, maybe I want to update the weight of a bunch of things. I don't know. It could be whatever field you really want. And so I'm going to call this map mapping, which is whatever name I just want to make up. I'm going to call it size, cost, weight. Right? Because those are the fields I'm going to manipulate. A mapping is just telling the point of sale which fields I want to export to my Excel file. Okay, so I'm saving that mapping. I'm going to use that mapping to export. I have 144 items in here. We're going to export them. And it's going to pop open Excel with just those columns you can see here. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to be like, okay, I forgot to enter a cost for this whole uh, slew of jackets and these are all the different sizes are going to cost me let's say uh, maybe I pay $17 a piece now when you're doing a mass update in Excel the really cool thing is you can type in uh, one field you can type in the number you want and then it 
I just grab this bottom right corner here and I pull it down and I'm gonna overwrite this one as well there it just changed them all to 17 so that's something I wanted to do to the jackets and then for weight oh maybe these all weigh you know 4.5 pounds or something like that so I'm gonna update that as well there we go and then over here this one uh, these different ones are all gonna be 12 pounds for some reason I don't know what a thinger is <laughs> but uh, that's that and you can just go through your Excel sheet and you know update a lot of different things oh, come on you know and you can just fly through and be updating a lot of different items on these columns you know obviously if you're trying to update something else like I, I had a customer the other day and they had put all the uh, vendor SKU numbers into what was it it was either the description or they had put it into uh, another field but I, I felt like the vendor part number that they were putting in this certain field maybe it was a custom field uh, that should have been put into the ALU field and so uh, keep in mind this is another uh, note of pertinence is the field they were taking it out of they wanted to be blank in after the after the update and then they wanted to move it into the ALU field so what we did was we exported that custom field and we exported the ALU field and then we highlighted this entire column and we just copied and pasted it over to the ALU field and then we deleted everything in the custom field column and I'll show you in a moment on the import you want to tell it whether or not to pay attention to blank fields I'll, I'll explain that in a minute all right so I'm gonna save this this is my mass export I saved all of everything that I changed there and now I'm gonna come back I'm gonna to go to utilities and import and I'm gonna hit next got inventory items again now we are not using the default template we're using a an Excel sheet that just has uh, certain columns so we're gonna say custom file first we are going to choose our I think it was called wow these are huge it was called mass or where'd it go mass export there it is and so we're gonna say hey we're doing sheet one data starts on row two because row one is the column headers and then we don't have a file mapping yet so we're gonna make another new file mapping I'm gonna call this what was it size cost weight it's just an easy way to know what's in this mapping once again we want item number and item name we we need item number because that is what the import is going to recognize as the item so that it knows not to create a new item it knows the items already there because the item number lines up and then it will overwrite some of the information <clears throat> so item okay and then size and then order cause oh I gotta show all fields I'm gonna say show all fields I'm hitting yes to save it for some reason you have to save it before you can see the expanded number of fields let's find order cost so I'm just mapping these and wait where is wait and so whatever fields you previously exported and updated you'll just remap them to what they are in point of sale it's kind of doing the same thing you did when you exported whoops all right save and that's what we're gonna use I'm gonna hit next now this is important during the import point of sale needs to look at a field and determine if the item is already in there so what field should point of sale use to determine if it's already in there we said item number because that's a unique identifier if it found an item number in your Excel sheet that was not already in point of sale it would create a new item but that would be weird because we just exported them right so when duplicate records are detected uh, we want to oh yeah so it's going to find the duplicate records because the item numbers are already in there and we want to replace existing data ignoring any blank fields 
and that would mean if it found a blank field in the Excel sheet, it would not overwrite what is in point of sale. However, uh, that one I was talking about the other day where he wanted to move all of the data from one column to the other column, to the other field, he would want to include blank fields so that it blanked out where it used to be and imported the, the new field, the ALU field. So depending on what you're doing, if you're moving data from one place to another in the record, you probably want to include the blank fields and import and overwrite and blank out that previous uh, field. But I'm going to ignore blank fields because I'm not doing that. I'm just, I just typed in stuff and if there's a blank field, I don't want it to overwrite any info that's already in there. Uh, this last thing, it puts it into the system department. That's more if you're importing uh, brand new stuff and you don't have departments specified. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to do a test. It's going to read it and it's going to tell you what it's actually going to do. So it's saying uh, zero of these items are going to be added as new items and 144 items in my sheet are going to be updated. Really it's only going to update the ones that I've changed and it's going to it's going to overwrite the information that was already there. So I'm going to I'm going to say no to backing up. You should probably do a backup, but uh, this is just my crappy sandbox company and I don't care. So I'm going to hit import. That's just to save us some time. So these items were now updated. I'm going to close. We're going to head to the item list and if I look at slim such and such a jacket, uh, if I, I don't have the columns out here, so I'm just going to hit details on one of these and we can see that the order cost has been updated to 17 and whatever else I changed when we were in there should be updated as well. Uh, it wasn't size. I, I think it was other items I actually updated. Style thinger. We now have... Uh, what, what did I... I don't even remember what I updated on this. Uh, if I open the sheet, I could tell you again, but you were there, so you know. <laughs> so everything that I wrote into that Excel sheet will now be updated in point of sale. And that, my friends, is how you update a massive number of items. So I look forward to seeing you in our Facebook group, and you have yourself an excellent day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.